as you probably all remember this video here about my Kinawa Fuega build or over my, over all my Kinawa talent build, which you can also use with Kinawa Nico, for example. Um, a lot of people have asked me, especially from 293, about Archer Marches, what build should they go with Kinawa and stuff like that. I was deciding, okay, I'm gonna re-upload now already. Um, or I'm gonna start re-uploading now already with like the videos which I have uploaded on my other YouTube channel and put them here on the new channel since I think these guides are pretty helpful and I mean also not that old. Okay, this Kinawa uh, video is already um, a couple of months old but I think it's still related. I, I still standing towards this build because I think that's the best Kinawa build which we have um, in the game in my opinion. So yeah, let me know in the comments what you think about that. If you have any question towards this specific build from Kinawa or overall any questions to any archer marches or heroes let me also know in the comments i will answer everything guys otherwise i wish you a lot of fun with the video i hope this video gonna help you also and yeah we're gonna see us on the next one you guys have asked me multiple times how is my archer march such so good what is my talent tree and how am i getting reports like this like this or like this and that's what I want to show you in this video. I want to give you a quick rundown through the talent tree and my overall build. Like, what, why am I using the Kinara for Eager Commanders? And why do I use the Artifact Gold Crest? What is the overall build from this march? And why does it work so good on the open field? And even against T5. You know, I, as you saw in the live stream, I have even trained. Uh, really good against C5 and that's what I want to give you today if you enjoy the content don't forget to hit the like button don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss out any future content and I don't want to say anything more let's jump into the video all right guys here we are we are in the hero list so the first thing what you need to notice or what you need to have for this march is of course a good uh, technology tree as you may um, saw my power is around 30 main right now i have decent amount of tech and that's the basic that's the ground what you have of what you need to have of course the buffs right from the technologies and from the buildings of course what i what you also all know is that i have my kinawa awaken and that's the first key what you need to have Kinawa Awaken is the thing what you need to have because it gives March a 20% defense break on the target legion with normal attack. And that is in my knowledge one of the highest, if it's not even right now the highest defense break what we can get from a hero skill or talent tree. I know that Kinawa have over the control tree a defense break. By the way, that's not stacking, so you don't even need to try that. I tried it. So if you have Kinawa Awaken, you don't have to, uh, to go for the control tree, but that's something else. You need to have Kinawa Awaken. My gold quiz is on level four, level 60, six stars. So I get here from the from the stars and um, level buffs, I got everything and I got the skill from itself on level four, which is, you know, don't do the counter attack damage or the trade like this, but some of the trades are also really good because of the artifact skill. And my Foyega is 5551, which is also really, really needed because you get a, a normal attack damage bonus and defense bonus. You get another physical attack bonus and normal attack crit damage bonus. And you get from the weight skill another skill damage factor, you know, um, and increasing the normal attack crit rate by six percent for seven seconds. Why do I? Why do you not need for Ega Awaken? In my opinion, is because the Awakening skill is basically changing nothing. It is only changing the physical damage factor by two hundred. That's all. It increased from 600 to 800. And in my opinion, that is not something what you should invest 320 tokens for. 
The last skill is sure. You could say now, yeah, but I get 30% march speed on level 5 and the enemy gets 20% less um, wage accumulation speed. Sure, you're right. There are some decent buffs, but I do think still that it's not worth 320 tokens to invest for. So that are with heroes. Let's jump into the talent tree. Before we jump into the talent tree, guys, I want to don't stop you from that. All my buildings, all my training uh, buildings are on 24, except the Wyvern camp. I'm making it on 24 right now. That gives me on an overall 1.5% bonus on defense, on another defense. From the wider camp, I get attack bonus. From the mage one, I get HP bonus. And from the infantry one, I get another attack bonus. These are decent amount of buffs, which you really need. My technology, by the way, is looking like this. As you can see, everything before Intelligence at Gatorwing 2 is on max. Defense formation and first eight one is 9 out of 10. As Hold Strategy 1 is 10 out of 10. And then here the purple ones, defense formation and first eight two, both out of 8 of 10. Assault Strategy 2, 7 out of 10. Sharp points 2, both uh, or both marksmen buffs, 9 out of 10. And what are the buffs what you need to have if you want to do such good as I do? Now let's jump into the talent tree. So here we are, guys. Here is what you have waited for. That is the reason why you have clicked on this video. Correct. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown. Why did I choose everything what I did in this talent tree? So obviously you're going to start here with the attack. There's nothing to compare about. Um, then you have the first decision what you need to make. I tried both. I tried for defense and the march speed. I need to say that with a 6% march speed buff, what you get here from the beginning is overall more beneficial. It works better than the defense because, as you know, marksmen have less range, means you go, you need to go more into the melee range to attack, for example, a mage march. So, to avoid that you walk longer, so you get hit by more marches, you get uh, you avoid these three points on the defense, and you go with a six percent march speed, and you went really good on the march speed. When you go obviously with a half, getting the big one, and um, then you can go into either going first in the PPP tree or control tree, doesn't matter really. So what you need to get in the uh, control tree, obviously you're starting here with a march speed. Then, you, of course, of course, you need the counter attack because, as we know, marksmen do having the highest counter attack damage base in the game, um, and having another counter attack damage bonus on this from the tree, plus the fourth skill from Kinero, where you have also 30% physical counter attack damage bonus, is like delicious. Then, you're getting, of course. Um, with 59, you have right either one tree line done and another one up to the second big point. So you have on level 60 one extra point. That's what I have put in into all conquering to avoid getting 0.8% uh, more normal tech damage, um, which is pretty decent, I think. If you compare the amount of marches which you're attacking, and every march, of course, doing normal tech damage bonus. So having a little bit less damage is pretty helpful. When you of course get Egoism, you're getting 4% less ski ski damage in an open field situation. I don't need to tell you how much ski damage you're take, uh, taking from Lilia, from Velen, from Wardy, Irvin, all these fucking mage marches which doing a lot of damage to you and you don't even need to be the target. You know, that's the problem with Mage Marcher. You can hit other Marchers by not hitting them much. So, for example, if I'm hitting a T4 March with my Mage March, the T5 March next to it could get skill damage because the Witch skill from my Mage March is saying I can hit up to three person within the range. So, having this on your Marksman March or overall on the speed 
is really, really good. Then, of course, you're taking the counterattack, have a 10% chance to see 40 rage from an enemy. It's like perfectly. It works perfectly. It, it fits perfectly, just perfectly. Because your damage is based on counterattack. Most uh, or a lot of damage comes from the counterattack. And having then also a skill where you steal 40 rage from the enemy by counterattacks is like delicious. Because the intention of this build is at the end that you kinda tanking marches. Your idea behind that build is that you're looking for not taking too much damage, so you're avoiding, of course, with that negative trait, but you wanna have such a good look on your march that you feel like, okay, I'm doing positive traits with counter attack only, so they invest more tubes when you do. So that's the idea behind that. That's why you can go for it. That's why you can tank a little bit. So, and of course you could say, oh yeah, but I mean, Marksman, hey, they're doing a lot of normal attack damage. Um, even Freya buffing normal attacks with crits and all that. Why are you not going for it? That's completely true. But the skill from Freya is already so fine. You're doing already a lot of normal attack damage. You don't need these buffs. So I wafer getting buffs where you do more counter attack damage and where you get more tanky, which is really, really good, especially for T4 players who need to care about their troops, not us T5 players who having more buffs, better troops. They don't, they, they could just go for these buffs here. You know, they don't need to, for example, here care about the defense. They could just go for this. That's true. But as a T4 player, you need to kind of care about your match. So you need to look, okay, what fits perfectly here into the situation. Then let's jump into the PvP tree. Of course, you start here with the attack. Then you're getting the defense bonus here. Of course, you could choose the mass speed and or the rivalry here where you do put some more normal attack damage in the field. There are options which you could go. The mass speed is really not needed. You already have a lot of mass speed with this one here and with this one and from the four eager with 15% one. So you're not really needing mass speed bonus. Um, as I told you how the intention with that build is, you going over talent tree a little bit more tanky. So I have choose the defense. Same with here, the next line. I choose the HP. I could say this, Furry Flame, more skill damage. The build is not really based on skill damage and also not the heroes. And the uh, Wage one is here again based on the skill damage, which you don't have with that much. Of course, you have skill damage, but your damage is not coming from, skid, uh, from skills. When you get Luck of a Draw, when you Legion launch a counter attack in the field, they have a 10% chance to reduce all damage taken by 1% up to a maximum of 3% for 20 seconds. What should I say? It's the same with the one in the control. Perfectly. It's delicious. It fits perfectly into the tree. The other one, yeah, it's also okay. You know, increased damage is totally fine, but I think, again, you need to uh, reduce all damage taken. And all damage taken, reducing is like, holy shit, man. It's like badass. It's like badass. You reduce all damage taken. Like I said, it's it's perfectly. <laughs> it's perfectly. When you go, of course, with a counterattack damage, because, as I said, you're doing a lot of, or you want to do a lot of counterattack damage. And then you have in the next line one of these three. And I was going here actually for the damage because it is overall damage. It's saying you each indeed 1.5% more damage. It's not saying normal attack damage. It's not saying counter attack damage, not saying scale damage. As I assume it's saying overall more damage. I could be wrong. Tell me in the comments if I'm wrong. From my understanding, that increase all damage. That means everything, in my opinion. I could be wrong. I didn't test it. The second one is not really needed. It's again, March speed. And the third one here is intercepting an enemy. We again shatter, increasing the defense. Could be also good, but I think this is more worth. So in the next line, you have then only two because you was not going here for this one. So you cannot go for this one. 
So I was going here, of course, for this one, because the healing here is not really needed. Like 240 or 300 what you get here is like a joke, you know, compared to this. When Legion is in the field and their unit count is less than 50%, they deal 3% more damage. It's amazing, you know, it's amazing. Again, more damage overall, from my understanding, increase everything perfectly. Then we have the last big tree here. And here I was going for the Blessing of Furry because you're getting here more HP. Um, again, you know, tanky, making you much tanky, having us only damage, more damage, and counterattack damage, everything else is basically um, tankiness. The other one you could have also go for, uh, in fact, defense break here again. You don't need that because Kinawa is having a defense break and the defense break is not stacking, it's overweighting. You can check that in the reports, the same with this one here. As soon as you have Kinawa awakened, you don't, you don't need ambush anymore because it's over white with defense break. So you waste, you would waste then five points here, you would waste one point here. It's not, you know, it's not needed. You can use that, of course, if you don't have Kinaw Awaken. Um, then you could maybe say, okay, I'm gonna go for Breach Blade instead of um, Blessing of Furby. You could you could do that, that's potentially possible. Um, having a defense break. But I think this tree is like really, really badass. It's having a lot of tankiness, a lot of counter attack damage, and that's where the damage is coming from. As, as you have saw in my live streams when I was fighting, I was kind of um, going in with my uh, with that build, with that march, because I know, okay, I can go in that long, I can tank this long, and I still do positive, even if I, if I see they're minus 5k per turn, it's still winnable for me because I look in on the enemy numbers and I see minus 2k, minus 3k and I know, okay, one march is getting minus 3k while I'm getting attack from 5, 6, 7 marches getting minus 5k per turn. So that means already, okay, I'm winning the trades because they're getting almost the same as I do. And that's what the bid is for. You're reducing the damage by getting a lot of tankiness over HP, over defense, um, getting a little bit march speed so you are faster you can go in faster you can go out faster if you need to so you're reducing the ski damage you're reducing a little bit the normal attack damage which is really fitting into the build you steeding rage you're doing you reducing the all damage by counter attacks it is really really perfect this build and that can also only work in my opinion with kinaro for eager um because kinaro have from her kit already the defense break, which means you don't need to do it in your talent free bit. You're having a physical counter attack damage deep bonus, which is fitting perfectly with, with a bit. You having a lot of attack bonuses, normal attack bonuses. You're having also a hero skill damage taken reduction 10% from the second skill of Kinawa. It's really perfect. It's really perfect with bit. I have never saw any other Marksman, marksman bid where people was having such crazy merit uh, reports. As you saw, or as you know, my highest merit report is 43k, I guess. Maybe I blend it in now if I find it. Um, but as you know and saw in my live streams, I do a lot of 30k, a lot of 20k, 25k. That is like around the average what I'm getting with my marksman march if I'm really doing um, a good job, if I'm playing normal, um, it's cr it's crazy. I can only suggest you to go for the speed, guys. Um, if you have, of course, now Kinawa not awakened for Eager not on that level, it can still work, but as to that position, then I cannot really give you an advice. If you have for Eager 5111, I'm not sure that is still such as good. I do think you need to have these two commanders on this level because on the second scale from Vega, for example, you're getting a 15% defense bonus, you're getting normal attack bonus. Your damage is basically coming from this um from the skills while you're getting from the talent tree more tankiness and reducing damage overall. 
So I'm not sure if that build is really fitting into your, into your march if you don't have King Now Awaken, if you don't have Vega 5 up and 1. Write it down in the comments if uh, maybe um, how your marches or how your commanders are right now looking. Maybe I can give you an advice then if I have tests a little bit around then. Um, maybe you can share me your experience with that build into the comments. I know some of you, I gave over the build. I know some of you have copied it probably from the past live streams when you saw it. So maybe you can share in the comments how you experience are with that. Otherwise, I'm out now, guys. I hope that build is going to help you uh, having more fun with Marksman. I do love Marksman. I can only suggest you guys to use them. It's really, really funny. If you have a white build, you can do a lot of, lo a lot of, a lot, like really, I'm telling you, about a lot of damage to the enemy. Mages are more constantly more looking for more skill damage while marksmen you can just throw in. You dying faster than mages, sure, but you're doing also more damage in my opinion. It's hilarious, it's funny, it's really crazy what reports you're getting. It's crazy to see the enemy dying by your counter-attack damage. It's like funny as hell. Um, and and that is with T4, you know, I'm using T4, I'm not using T5, and I'm telling you, this is my best match, this is what I'm using, and I hope you're gonna have fun, stay healthy guys, I wish you a great day, and we're gonna see us on the next one.